Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to non-destructively make base sets of walls for level design that we can easily edit for different styles. We're going to adhere to some game metrics that I'll talk about as we go, and as a bonus we're going to export them out of Blender into Unreal Engine 5 so we can run around them with a character. To start off we're going to create a set of curves from our plane to act as the guide for our wall sizes. So Shift A to add Mesh and Plane. Then we're going to tab into edit mode and turn on edge length in the overlays. Next, I'll add two loop cuts and delete the faces to the left and front. And then I'm going to change the snapping to increment and turn it on. OK, grabbing the front edge with G and constraining to the X axis, you can see it snaps in one meter increments, but if you hold shift, it will snap in increments of 10 centimeters. For this first piece, I want it to be 40 centimeters in length, so I'll drag it to the left until, it's, until it says 0.4. Selecting the whole face, I'm going to shift D to duplicate, press X to constrain, and hold shift to move it to the right. I like to leave a 20 centimeter gap between each piece. For this piece, I'm again going to grab the front edge GX and hold shift as I move it to the right, this will be 1.6 meters. So the two pieces combined will make a two meter wide wall. Again, duplicate the face with shift D, X and leave a gap of 20 centimeters. This piece we're going to extend as before, grabbing the front edge, GX, hold shift, and this one's going to be doubled to 3.2 meters. For the next one, we're going to duplicate the 1.6 meter piece as this will be a corner, moving it to the end again with the 20 centimetre gap. We're then going to extend the back edge on the Y axis. Hold G, press G, Y, hold shift and make it a square 1.6 metres. OK, then lastly, we're going to duplicate the first piece. Snap it to the end of the corner piece and make a reverse corner. This time 0.4 meter squared. We can do this by shortening it to 0.8 on the Y, then adding a loop cut and extruding the edge on the X axis. OK, that's looking pretty good. So next, we're going to select all of the edges that we're keeping along the front edges here. Press Shift D to duplicate, then right click to leave them in place. Press Control I to invert the selection and delete. We can now convert this to a curve object with our wall, which our wall profile will extend along. Next, we need to make our wall profile objects, and I'm again going to use a mesh object. So shift A mesh cube. The default is two meters squared. So GZ1 will raise it up to sit on the floor and move it forward on the Y axis. Adding a loop cut, we can delete the front faces. And then I'm just going to pull this face back to make it 0.4 and extend the top to make it three meters tall. We can now select the open edges and as before, Shift D, right click, Control I to invert the selection and delete. It doesn't hurt to merge verts. Next, I'm going to select this front vert and using the interactive tools free add-on, use quick origin to snap the origin point to this vert. Lastly, we're going to convert this into a curve. We now have a wall curve and a profile curve object. Selecting the wall curve, we can go to the Curve Properties panel and under the Geometry bevel, change it to Object and then select the Profile Curve as the object. Uh, you can immediately see it doesn't look right. So to fix that, we're going to go to Options and turn on Origins. And if we rotate 90 degrees on the X, we get the correct height. And if we rotate 90 degrees on the Y, we can see it extends backwards to give the wall the thickness in the correct orientation. Disable Effect Origins. And above it, we can also disable um, back face culling just to see the back side of the walls. You may also want to enable fill caps in the geometry bevel. 
The profile for our corner walls are uneven, and to fix that we just need to go to the wall curve panel, shape section, and change it from 3D to 2D. We can now begin detailing our first wall set. Select the profile curve and go into edit mode, select the two front verts, right click and subdivide. Increase the number to two and we can select those two verts, move them down on the z-axis and extrude them in on the Y to create a recess. As we extrude on the Y with EY, we can see all of our wall objects get the same shape, even around the corners. We can do this for the top as well. This time scale the recessed area to give it a slightly different style. Selecting the verts on the bottom recess, we can also right click and use fillet to give these corners a bevel. Note this does change our handles to bezier and all verts will now have handles. You can adjust the radius of the fillets in the bottom left corner. The amount of geometry created for this fillet is determined by the resolution steps in the curve panel default in at 12. Out of edit mode you can select the wall curve and add the old auto smooth modifier if you're in Blender 4.1 to fix the shading. We can then continue refining the shape. Selecting the two verts at the front of the recess we can shape the 3D cursor, sorry snap the 3D cursor between them. This will be where new geometry is created. With shift A we can add a circle rotate it to the correct orientation with RY90, then scale it down inside orthographic view. We can position it inside the recessed area and make a set of pipes that follow the wall. With one in place, you can just shift D to duplicate and resize as preferred. Back on our wall curve, we can select the vert of the corner piece and give this a fillet too, adjusting the radius to give it a better shape. Do this for the inside corner too, but with a smaller radius. Back on the profile curve, we can enclose the recessed pipes with an overhang, adding additional verts and then extruding down. We can do this to make recessed areas for holding grates, vents, lights or bumpers depending on the design and keep refining and experimenting until you're happy with the style. When you have something you like, duplicate the ball curve with Shift D and move it forward on the Y axis, right click and convert it to a mesh. Then in top orthographic view, X-ray select each wall piece and press P to separate by selection. You don't need to do this with the last piece or you'll have an object with nothing in it. Next select the front vert at the bottom left and snap the origin point there. You'll need to do this for each piece. Re-enable increment snapping if you disabled it and in the top view you can now duplicate parts of this wall into your first layout. Rotate corners 90 degrees or no, negative 90 degree and hold shift or zoom in more if you need more precise snapping. You can build layouts out of top view too but you'll need to exclude the z-axis when moving pieces with shift z. At any point you can go back to your profile curve, delete all but the four corner verts and make a different style. You can change the handles back to vector if you prefer working that way, it does make it easier. Try spacing things out differently, having divisions at different heights, and using other curve tools like shear to get different angles.
You can also make variations of each wall piece by adding doors, windows or panels to the existing geometry. This allows you to keep all the sizes but have interchange wall pieces. Simply duplicate one of the walls, add a boolean and you have a windowed wall that will fit perfectly with the other pieces. On this design, I added a loose rectangle sitting in a groove to turn into a grate covering the pipes, as well as window and door variations to be swapped out as needed. These are three unique looking designs I made in just a few minutes for this video. You can even make modular floors with recessed pipes or wires to go with the wall sets. Depending on the size of the environment and its use, you may want to remove internal faces between walls and merge them together but if you're making a set for games, it's better to keep them separate and make the layout in the game engine. Here you can see three layouts that I made from these sets, and the middle blue set is the set that I'll be exporting to Unreal Engine. I mentioned a while ago on a channel update that I'll be learning Unreal Engine 5. I'm still very much a noob on that, so there's probably better ways of doing it, but this is just what I've found out so far. If I export this set now as it is, there'll be some problems when I import it. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to select everything, Bring up the FBX exporter. If you don't have this Pi menu, just go to File Export. And I'm not going to change any of the options. To select Export FBX. Over in Unreal, I've started a third person template and deleted the default objects. If I can now go to Import in the Content Browser and find the FBX I import, exported from Blender, you'll see a bunch of import options. Again, I'm not going to change any of these, just accept the defaults. And when I click Import down the bottom, it will bring up a message log with a lot of error warnings. It isn't exactly clear what they all mean, and if we close the window, it doesn't seem to have affected anything yet. All of our assets are shown in the content browser below, and we can drag and drop any of them into the world to start building our layout. However, it quickly becomes obvious that our object's pivot points are not in the right places, which makes it unnecessarily difficult to line them up. After some digging, I found the errors related to a few things, so back in Blender we can begin fixing them. First, select everything, tab into edit mode, and select all of the faces. Press U and Smart UV Project, and accept the default settings for now. Objects needing to be unwrapped clears two of the error messages. Next, the origin point issue is because FBX is treating every object as its offset from the world center. So again, select everything and snap them all to the 3D cursor temporarily while we export. Lastly, in the export settings, scroll down to geometry and change smoothing from normal to face. We can then export this again. You can undo the snapping to cursor if you wish. Back in Unreal, we're going to import our new FBX file, accept the default options, and success, no error logs. As before, we can drag and drop our walls into the world and press W to bring up the move gizmo. Here we can see our origin is correct and we can begin placing walls around our scene. Holding Alt while dragging a piece will duplicate it, and we can press E to switch to the Rotate tool and build any layout we like. Our walls also have come in with no textures, and Unreal has assigned them a default world grid material, and possibly due to our default unwrap, looks awful. So I'm going to shift select all of the walls in the scene, and on the right hand side, uh, this is the wrong drop down, under Materials, change this to Base Floor, which I know is a solid bluish colour. We can now hit Play and drop in as a character to run around our layout. Click first with the mouse button to look around, then use the WASD keys to move. You can also jump with the spacebar. To exit Play mode, press Escape. Thank you for watching, and if you found this useful, a like, subscribe or comment helps the channel out.